Welcome to Dog on the Plot, um, which is Dog in the Garden this week. Come on then. There she is. <laughs> um, so, I promised you a home garden tour this week, but the garden is a mess. It's been a mess for a really long time. Um, there's lots of plants that oh, just need to get in the ground. I think I'm going to start losing plants if I don't get them in the ground. Those Taunton Dean Kales were on a knife edge this week and I just got them watered in time to save them. So yeah, I think that's my priority today is um, to get compost on the new flower bed to start getting some stuff into that. So you remember I was sort of umming and ahhing whether to do the wildlife garden, but I, wildlife sort of um, planting, wildflowers as they're sometimes called. Um, so, um, Part of me still wants to do that maybe at that very back bit under the ginkgo tree where all the moisture is kind of sucked up by the tree. But certainly the front of the bed needs to be plants because I've just got so many plants and there's nowhere for them to go other than there. So um, that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to start by watering the bed um, to try and get as much moisture in as I can um, before then emptying my compost bays or bay, the one that's ready over here, ready-ish. Um, I'm going to empty that onto the bed to trap that moisture underneath it um, and then I'm just going to plant into it. Uh, there's lots of other things that need doing, there's lots of kind of weeding that needs doing. Um, all of this mess here <laughs> needs, needs tidying, I'm not sure I'm going to get to that. Um, but when I've done all that then I can give you a garden tour that is hopefully a lovely garden or a slightly better garden than it is currently. Um, yeah, so my first job is to go and find out how good this compost is that I've attempted to make. Come on, Adori. There's a squirrel chirping away in the tree over here, I think. Anyway, um, I'm in the compost bin and um, not too bad, I don't think. So this was made last year. It's been sitting here all over the winter uh, under a layer of cardboard and um, plastic. Uh, I watered it and turned it a month ago, maybe. Um, and it was still quite woody and I think it probably still is, but I'm, I'm okay with that for this new bed. I'm um, not using this to necessarily sow seeds, although maybe I will direct sow some stuff in there. Anyway, have a look, see what you think. So it's got some of the blossom from the hawthorn tree above. There's the current bin. So, let's have a look. so you can see um, all this sort of um, fibrous material in here is the wood chip from the rabbit poop and straw, I think, bedding. Um, but there, there, look, there are all the worms. The worms are in there. There they are. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't think this is too bad at all. And it's got some moisture in it. Um, so watering it was definitely a good idea. Um, okay, I'm going to get this into the wheelbarrow. Can you hear them? Let's see if I can see them.
<laughs> that is definitely what you would call rough compost. So there it is. Um, yeah. So there's quite a lot of sticks in there, avocado pips and things like that. But I used rough compost on the front garden um, and that's done superbly. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty pleased that I produced that compost. I mean, I stuck it in a pile. Worms and other critters did the actual job. But yeah, I made it happen. Pretty good. All right, so now it's in. I can think about planting it up. So I've got an awful lot of stuff. Hollyhocks, foxgloves, ranunculus, gypsophilia, um, Rebecca, loads of things that, oh, loads of aquilegias. I went a bit mad sowing aquilegias and lots of um, pansies and things as well. So I think my plan is really to just get as much of it into this bed as possible, get roots in the ground, um, get it to flower for summer and look beautiful. Um, and then perhaps into next year, put more perennials in that. I've got perennials that st still need to go out as well, my salvias, uh, in particular, but I think I'm going to put those in the more established bed over here, the um, what I'm calling my purple bed or blue bed. I think I was calling it the blue bed. So I've got my like pink and white ones. This is going to be a kaleidoscope bed. Actually, it's going to be called um, the ginkgo bed because there's the ginkgo tree. Gorgeous tree casts a lot of shade, takes up a lot of water, so it's going to be kind of a shy, uh, shy, dry shade bed. Um, but it does get sun in the morning, so it gets some sun, um, so I think some of those plants will do okay. Certainly I think the foxgloves will like it, so um, I'm going to pop those in first, I think, and perhaps do them in little groups, um, as opposed to kind of doing a line of foxgloves along the, the back of the bed. Yeah, so... Um, that's going to be my afternoon, I think, planting up. I've got lots of things that need repotting, pricking out, all that sort of stuff. Um, but I think I'll get cracking, so stop filming, get cracking, and then I will meet you on the other side and give you a tour of what I've done. See you then. It's nearly half past five. When I made a list of all the things I've put in, it seemed a lot, but I've really only scratched the surface. Certainly have done no weeding, no tidying. Um, there is some stuff in the new bed, um, but not a lot. Um, and I've put my salvias in, I've put my fuchsias in, um, some comfries I had, some honeysuckles, um, hollyhocks, violas, uh, what else, foxgloves, gypsophilia, I know Dory, so many things. Dory um, stayed in the living room and slept during the whole thing. But yeah, um, this is more than an afternoon job. Mm -hmm. So um, we will be picking this up again before the garden tour. Um, now it's time for somebody's walk and uh, somebody's glass of wine, I think. Yeah, I think day done. Okay.
welcome back um, three three days later and um, now on the other side of the bank holiday and I did not get half as much as I wanted to do done um, which was probably predictable over the bank holiday I've also been spending some time at the allotment so but some things have been done in the garden and warts and all tour then so it's not perfect but this is what the garden looks like at the end of May the 30th of May today hey Dory oh that's what it looks like so um yeah we won't look at all the rubbish <laughs> that's still about um but know that it's there um instead we'll focus on the things that I've done, the things I have achieved, and um, make, perhaps making a bit of a list of what still needs to be done. Um, okay, so, ready for our May home garden tour. You ready, Dory? You ready? So I thought we'd start at the compost bays because um, something you don't often see on garden tours is um, the nuts and bolts, like the compost bays. Um, now this one I emptied and that went on to the new bed. You saw that in the first half of the video. And um, when I then started turning this one into the empty bay, um, all the sort of recent stuff needs to break down all went in there um, but I got to a certain point and then it was compost it would it already happened underneath so I'm just going to open it up and show you um, what's going on in there so I've covered it with a layer of cardboard you can still see all the blossom from the hawthorn um, but there is oh, <laughs> there is the compost underneath so it's rough it's rougher than the stuff that i put on the new bed um but it's not bad and there's little ants in there they can do their thing and there's plenty of worms um so i'm pretty chuffed with that because i thought i would be waiting another i don't know how many months for it all to turn but um now i've still got two piles i've got one that's just being left to fully decompose and i've got the one i'm adding to so I'm pretty chuffed with that because I've only got a two-bay system. I haven't got the space for three bays in the home garden. So I thought, yes, we'd start at the compost bays and then work our way down the garden to the new bed. Okay, let's go. So the next stop is the blueberry planter. And I want to take you to here because there are some heathers that are still alive. And there are blueberries. <laughs> Yay! So I got about, I don't know, three, four, five blueberries off my bushes last year. I've got a lot more bushes now. There's some more coming on that one. Uh, not so many on this one. Oh, there's some right at the bottom. <laughs> um, and this one that's still got the flowers on, um, I think is the pink lemonade one, which I'm really excited about. So hopefully some of those flowers will be turning into blueberries. Um, I've got buckets of phacelia and stuff that I've been cutting down and I'm putting it near to the blueberry planter to try and encourage pollinators over this way. Now the other thing here is the um, honeyberry and I'm not going to be able to find them now am I? Oh no there they are. Uh, ooh, there we go there's a honeyberry there's two. I'm very excited about these that's what they'll look like. So they're not in with the blueberries because you don't need to um, give honeyberries ericaceous soil. Honeyberries are a honeysuckle, uh, an edible honeysuckle. So that's why they are treated a bit different. But I put them together because they're similar, similar kind of berries. And this is Tulip Graveyard. So they're doing all their dying back um, in readiness to be stored for next year. Now, if I swing around, here we have the old wardrobe, which is actually now just about falling apart so we'll see if we get anything in here um or can put anything in here this year to grow um but this is all the brassicas so they've been living in here for a while desperate to go out really these brassicas are cabbages uh calabrese some kales doing brilliantly really these ones much more tiddly and they were sown at barely the same time they look like cabbages uh, there's some kohlrabi down there as well um, these ones in the pots look good. They're the Ethiopian kale, um, I think. Is that the right one? Yes. 
so I'm pleased that they they're doing well they're black magic kale um, dahlias so they're the smaller dahlias and here are the rest I put them in my makeshift cold frame look at these bad boys look at these huge ones at the end and we have flowers coming very close there we go Ooh, focus focus there we go um now in terms of dahlias i did really well actually i think the only one is over here that's the only one that i hoped would go and hasn't which is a tartan one um all the rest did go even though they looked kind of suspect tubers some of those ones um that didn't um come up were ones that were just tubers that had fell off and didn't necessarily have an eye but i was just giving them a chance um but anyway no they didn't make it but that's okay happy with what i've got just need to get them in the ground now okay so as we continue our tour there's the apple tree i put in in this corner that's doing fine i'm not expecting apples on that it's really just a pollinating partner one um, because that's the one that my neighbour grew from, a pink lady seed. In the gooseberry bed, we have plenty of gooseberries. And on this side, there we go. Really excited for those, so that's excellent. Jerusalem artichoke bed, they're looking great, really tall. Can't wait for those to flower. Um, and behind them here is my austerian Austerian, Austerian tree cabbage, um, which we ate some of for some, was it Sunday dinner or bank holiday Monday dinner? Um, and it was delicious, so that's going really well. Have a lovely foxglove here as well. Um, some kales there, some bronze fennel, some random onions or garlic that just appeared in this bed. Turnips are all coming up and doing well. Asparagus bed, nothing, nothing in there. Um, rhubarb has been great, had some of that for breakfast yesterday um, with some waffles. Goji berries looking fine, just a berry, no berries on it. So the one at the allotment, the mama plant has some berries, but not so far on this one in the home garden. And my mint bed, which I planted up with you, is looking fabulous. I'm so pleased with it actually. It's uh, really filling out. I made all little um, signs for them as well. There we go. So, so we'll see how this goes in the long run and if one mint just kind of takes over the rest. But yeah, pretty happy with that. And in terms of this being the area of the garden, what did I call it? Like the invasive area. Things can just do what they want to do. I stand by that. But what I don't like is the red vein sorrel um going a bit mad so i might pull some of those out but the three-cornered leek is flowering and is beautiful and i have eaten some of that bronze fennel in here horseradish in here didn't come up so i dug it up and um i'm gonna eat it but there was a little shoot on it so i've cut that bit off and put it back in so we'll see and the garlic is just going over back there can see on the other side of the trellis that the red vein sorrel has just gone a bit mad along here so that's unfortunate there's some little wild strawberries down there though and aquilegias are in here um okay so on this side of um so i've got two berry beds either side of the garden i've got my comfrey growing great and uh, in flower um and then we've got the white currant bush which is laden, which is lovely. That, that was a good producer last year. But I have some red currants this year too, which I didn't get last year. So that's exciting. This is tansy in between. It's meant to be good to grow tansy with your berries. And then this is my black currant that almost didn't survive last year, but I'm sure I did see berries on it. Oh, well. Oh, where's that? There you go. There's one berry. <laughs> I'm sure I saw more than that. Um, anyway, it's doing its thing. And oh, isn't poached egg plant just amazing? I love it. Love it. And above the comfrey there, we have the elderflower tree. 
and it's just started producing flowers, which is lovely. Right, so if we walk across to the other side of the garden, all of four steps, um, I'll show you the second berry bed, and this is the one that gets the full sun. So the first one in here is a summer fruiting raspberry, um, but it was pretty much decimated by the drought last year. So there are a few little berries down there, but I'm not expecting too much from this this year. I'm hoping this is going to have a recovery year. But this is the tayberry, and that's got lots of fruits coming. And that goes all the way across um, into the loganberry, which has got so many fruits coming. It's very really exciting. Um, and there's a random foxglove coming up there, which is beautiful and lovely. And there goes some more poached egg plant on this side as well. And then it's the boysenberry that I planted with you, and that's got flowers on, and yeah, some berries are just coming as well on that one. This bed, which still has the geraniums that need to go out, and the tree peony, um, is full of potatoes. And this is the hotbed that I made, if you remember. Um, so I made a hotbed that wasn't particularly successful, and I'm now growing potatoes in it by accident. Right, I'll cross back over and then come back round the raised beds um, and just show you my hostas. How fabulous are they looking? So these are, look at that one. These are in the wheelbarrow planters. Oh, hello. They shouldn't be there. Um, with the mini ponds inside, which are a bit low on water. Um, and these, uh, they're looking a bit crispy again. I get, did give them a little chop. Um, oh, look. It's not quite getting to the water, that's why. Right, I'm going to top those up. Yeah, and there's the other one. So this is the first of the long raised beds. Elephant garlic at the back, doing amazing. Onions this side, doing fine. Some peas there that haven't been in long. Some spring onions, also not been in long and just coming up some kales that kind of immediately bolted so i'm not sure what happened there if anybody knows why would they bolt it's not been that warm um and then there's some celery there's beetroots that have been getting nibbled um there are radishes there's coriander there we go um oh that's coming up out of the bars that one um and oh yeah a volunteer nasturtiums come back self-seeded from last year so that's nice so that's one long bed. The second long bed has the peas in and if I just come under, ooh, very exciting. Look at all the peas. <laughs> so these plants look fairly scraggy, um, but nevertheless, they're producing peas. Uh, more onions, more coriander, uh, the broad beans still flowering here. I don't think there's any beans forming on the um, crimson ones yet but on the regular the aqua dolce I did notice some beans were forming oh there you go there's one right there hello oh oh excited about that um, purple sprout and broccoli gone over but these fennels are looking fine I'm not sure this basket is really doing much to protect them anymore but yeah they're doing good so they're Florence fennels and then the bed you've all been waiting for, I'm sure, the carrot bed. How, I mean, I am just so pleased with this. Excellent germination, terrible thinning. I haven't thinned anything, I guess terrible sewing. Sewed far too thickly. So I'm gonna thin these out um, at some point. And the coriander that I put around the edges is all coming up as well. Um, and it's got the onions and the garlic around the edges to kind of try and deter the carrot root fly. I put sweet peas to come up the arches as well and the clematis goes <laughs> up, 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 joins and it's come all the way up that side as well. So I am super pleased about that. There we go. This bed is still free so this is for the next sowing of carrots which I want to do fairly soon. 
sweet peas along the edge. Lemon tree has been repotted and now outside. So it's been flowering away, it smells lovely. Cherry tree, not much sign of anything on the cherry tree to be honest. Um, but on the apple tree, there we go. There's at least two. <laughs> but it's looking very long and spindly. Uh, we'll see how that one goes. More purple sprout and broccoli just going over. Um, this had Asian greens in which have bolted um, and some lettuces but the real lettuce sped is this one over here. Look at this, how magnificent. So pleased with that. Um, and this row's doing well. It's partner on this side, not so much. Um, and loads of sweet peas here as well that <laughs> clearly need tying in. And finally, the last two front beds, got some more Lola Rossa uh, lettuce in there. I cleared out all the lamb's lettuce that went to flower, which was lovely, um, but then the flower went over. Uh, this climbing rose that I bought, this is the danger of poorly corner. It said it was climbing rose, yellow rose. I was very excited about it. There's the flowers. <laughs> They're about the size. They're not even a five pence piece, I don't think. <laughs> but uh, yeah, oh well, it's coming up fairly well. This one on this side, again, not so great. Really not great. Uh, alliums coming up in the bed. Uh, oh, and I put spinach in this bed here. And I'm trying out strawch for the first time. So that's that's protecting those. But, oh, look at that. So that's my raised beds. Um, there's lots that can go out there. Uh, there's still some clearing to do. There's a big mustard over there that can come out. These purple sprouting broccolis can come out. But yeah, I'm pretty pleased with how it's going so far. Right, on to the front and the greenhouse. Oh, and to greet me on my way, the foxglove, oxeye daisies, forget-me-nots, and my favorite, cornflowers. Oh, I love them. Oh, magnificent. Love them, love them. What are you eating, Dory? Bird food. Um, okay, so this is meant to be where the alliums are coming up. This one's having a good go. Uh, not quite sure what's happening with it. Uh, poppies are in here, didn't put those in. Uh, there's a lettuce, randomly. Um, but what I did put in was my salvias, so that's in, an echinacea. Uh, verbena and there's another salvia which is just starting to flower there we go ah oh, lovely um i put petunias along here and i got my sweet peas in so liam very kindly made the frame and then i've planted around them protected them with strawch which seems to be working so far but i do need to put some more string around there so they've got something to latch on to i put some ranunculus in here as well just there We'll see how they do. And here are some GMs. I think it's Lady Streatham GM, but so colourful, so lovely and bright. My first, oh, David Austin Rose. This is Silas Marner. I mean, oh, just exquisite. Just absolutely exquisite. It's amazing. I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, but look at this, little sad drooping head, but plenty more to come up here. So looking forward to that. Um, so we're, on, we're in actually on the new bed here. I was leaving that till last, but we found our way here. Um, I put in some fuchsias just in this corner, which is probably the sunniest corner of the new bed. Oh, Dory, you're not supposed to be in it. She hasn't learned that this is a new bed yet. This isn't dog poo, by the way. It's grass. <laughs> there we go. Back on the bed. Um, okay. Greenhouse. Claude and Dean Kale saved. They're fine. More three-cornered leek. Oh, the um, sea bed. So I've got my sea kale, my sea beet, and my samphire. It's all doing fine. It's uh, probably due a seaweed feed and some salt water 
soon. Uh, Rebecca under here. And just, uh, what's that? Um, oh, what's it called? I can't remember. Um, cutting celery, stuff, more stuff, honey garlics that died, um, cosmos that got incredibly leggy, uh, new salad greens coming up, happy with that, stashams, begonias, um, violas that I put quite a few of those out, there's still some more, some more salady green things. I just planted some hollyhock seeds there, there in there. Okay, into the greenhouse. So I've done quite well in here. All the pumpkins, squash, uh, squashes, courgettes, cucumbers, aubergines, chilies, everything got potted up. So um, they're doing okay now. They're looking fine. Uh, there were some casualties in terms of germination. I didn't kill anything potting it on, so that's good. Uh, beans and stuff are all coming out as well now. Got lots of beans and peas and things. I've put some beans on the allotment. I've got my rhubarb. Rhubarb from seed. Um, this morning I planted some dwarf French beans. So they've gone in now. Um, I got white, uh, white, yellow varieties, green varieties and purple varieties so I'm quite excited about those I have to say I think one of my favorite things last year was dwarf French beans love them most of them didn't make it to the kitchen corn is doing okay I think getting a bit ropey hopefully that will go out soon more stuff just coming up and up there those are the globe artichokes in there still doing okay um more things holding on. Leeks came up, so that was really good. Uh, asparagus. So do you remember I found those couple of asparagus um, in the cosmos? Did I tell you that? Uh, well, I found tons more. And um, then I sowed, had sowed some new ones. So now I've got just masses of asparagus. Uh, potted up lime. That's fine. Uh, this is, um, what's it called? Cinnamon. Oh. Andy cinnamon vine Chinese yam I think that's what that says this is a real seeds one uh, apparently it's going to smell amazing okay some basil under there yeah oh there's the tomatoes they're okay starting to yellow a little bit what's people's verdict on these do they still look healthy they haven't filled um, there's, there's good roots in there, but not not ready to plant on yet, I don't think. Plant into the ground. And that's because this is where they've got to go. And it's kind of still full of stuff. They've got the peas. Oh, look at that pea. Oh, that pea's ready to pick. We've got peas, got lettuces in here, um, but then there's still celery that I've grown. Look, I grew celery. Um, and these fennels um, now those ones don't look great but um, I have harvested one that was a proper fennel bulb so really chuffed with that um, had that for dinner at the weekend as well um, coriander is flowering and there's parsley in there and this is um, chard and beetroots now going to seed um, this is the ridiculous amount of cosmos a couple of pumpkins there you go oh these are edible lupins, so they're going to go on the plot, but they um, grew brilliantly. They were straight up. Yeah, chuffed with them. Um, some flowers down at the bottom there as well. How you doing? You bearing with me here? You'll have to let me know if this is boring or not. I'm very excited about everything in my garden, but I appreciate other people may just want to see me um, actually doing jobs and things anyway continue on there's not much left to go okay here we have the fig and it has leaves on now which I was slightly worried about but there they are uh, the ornamental cherry this came out oh my goodness look at it um, and this pink geranium as well came out I've got some of those cornflowers going as well uh, bay 
these ranunculus have just gone over um, but yeah this this new bed or the organ I guess that this is the old new bed the other one was the old old new bed and this is the new bed gotta stop making beds um, I put a rose in looks a bit spotty but hopefully it'll be okay um, put some of these petunias in uh, salvia is flowering it's a hot one and uh, pond even has some stuff flowering as well let's get in the pond oh <laughs> you see the surface ripple then with the little tadpoles um, but yeah there that's water mint um, there we go that's lovely I can't remember what all of these are called now but yeah all looking good most of the ranunculus are done now I've got some more of the um, spring planted ones to go in but I mean they are lovely we'll talk perhaps about ranunculus a bit more because I've been having thoughts about it but yeah when they're actually like this they're lovely um, plenty of pansies this is a uh, lingonberry in there and slightly overgrown with pansies hello Dory some London pride there looking nice um, but this bed is the one that I really wanted to tackle and weed because it's gone a bit mad um, but I didn't get a chance so I'm just going to show you the highlights which are my new clematis white one which has grown um, the first peony I've ever managed to get to flower and it's a beauty there we go I only had one bud I'm making the most of this one flower um, I've got this rose here that's not doing much at the moment but check out this rose which goes right up into the fire thorn there we go right up there and it's lovely because with the white it's like like you would have a bouquet of red roses so I think that's beautiful okay, get in there get in there appreciate that <laughs> And I guess we'll end with the herb bed, which is also a bit mad. Chives are flowering, parsley there. This is the amaranth that I was feeding. Uh, no, hang on. Amaranth isn't right. I don't remember now it's what I was feeding the rabbit. It's gone out of my head. Um, these are the ranunculus uh, that I grew from the corms. And they're just going over. Sage is flowering. Uh, fever few has uh, gone a bit crazy but yeah all the forgetting me nots need to come out here now because I can't even see um, the magnolia <laughs> somewhere in there there's a magnolia tree but you wouldn't know it and actually lastly is the the new bed so I showed you the fuchsias at that end and I've just put in some hollyhocks and fox gloves some of the gypsophilia um, I have put in my um, edible honeysuckle uh the honey no this isn't honeyberry doing oh here's the label <laughs> winter flowering honeysuckle anisera hare oh, i thought it was called something else anyway it's an edible honeysuckle and um it likes shade so i put it there we'll see how it does i'll, I'll move it if not um, um i did do the thing where i put some sand down and put some wildflower seeds just at the base of the ginkgo tree um, and then i put violas all along the front but i still got all of this space to fill and obviously i've got a lot of dahlias but they, they don't really want to be in that shady spot do they so I'm gonna to have to think about that and I've also this is um, on this side there we go there it is there it is and um, that side uh, gets the Sun so I'm gonna put some dahlias in there I wanted to put my cafe au lait ones in there didn't I uh, is there anything I've missed you're like no shut up Kerry I have missed one thing which is I finally found some honey garlic that has grown I don't know how many bulbs of this I put in, but there's one. There's at least one. Hopefully some more will come up.
Right, Dory, that's the end of the tour. What did you think? So we got there in the end, in terms of the tour. It's my heron. Um, so thank you for joining me. I hope that was fun or enjoyable in some way. Bit of a weird one. This is... Oh, look at these baby birds. Oh, my mum is feeding them. Okay. Oh. oh, they've moved. Oh, they've gone up in the tree there. I'll try and get them for the outro. Um, but thank you. Thank you for joining me today. Um, or this bank holiday weekend. Um, if you enjoyed, please do like and subscribe. And um, I'll see you next week when we'll probably be back on the plot. Okay. Take care.